Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Koswa. Welcome back to my channel. On this channel, I make informational videos for pre-dental students, dental students, and new dentists to help them with their journey to dentistry. In this video, I'm going to be answering some frequently asked questions about my experience with the National Health Service Corps scholarship receiving it. Um, so if you're interested, please stay tuned. Okay, first of all, if you're wondering what the National Health Service Corps scholarship is, I have a whole video about how I went to dental school for free on the scholarship. So I'll link it if you're confused about what this is even about. Okay, so let's get to the questions. The first question is, do you get to choose where you are placed afterwards as long as it is an improved healthcare shortage site? Yes, you get to job search just like any other job as long as that position meets the requirements of your NHSC contract. About six months before you graduate from dental school or your postgraduate program, you'll receive an email from your from NHSC, your NHSC advisor, about what your um, HIPSA score for that graduating year is. HIPSA stands for Health Professional Shortage Area which is a metric that measures how needy the clinic or the site is. The higher the HIPSA score, the higher the need for clinicians in that area, and therefore the higher the priority for hiring clinicians for that site. NHSC will assign a HIPSA score for that graduating class for that year, and you can only work in a clinic that has your score or higher. So for example, if you graduated dental school in 2020, you're looking at point number three, um, the dental HIPSA scores were 19 and above. So you can only work in a site that has a HIPSA score of 19 or higher. Is it possible for you to be deployed overseas? And if so, do you get to choose where you go? So NHSC does not have any type of deployment. That's more like military. You have the chance to choose where to go. Now there's an asterisk there. You have to choose a, a site that um, qualifies in terms of the HIPSA score and after graduation, you have just about six months to find a job. And I think if you don't find a job within those six months, you might be, they might select a site for you. I'm not sure, I never, I found my job within six months, so I never like found out what happens if you don't, but there is fine print for that for sure. Do you get paid while in service after dental school? Also, is the salary a lot lower than in private practice? Yes, we get paid. Don't worry, you won't be working for free. In my opinion, I think the pay is respectable. A lot of the FQHC jobs are salaried, and so you are, I guess, somewhat capped in how much you can make at the end of, by the end of the year, unlike private practice where, you know, it's kind of uncapped, or it could be uncapped. It may not be as high as private practice in your first or second year out, but you're allowed to negotiate with your employer prior to the start of your contract if you feel like you deserve a higher pay. Most FQHCs, which are federally qualified health centers, will provide other benefits like health insurance, disability insurance, um, part, um, PTO, and a whole bunch of other um, benefits that make your overall package competitive. And also in general, the more rural the clinic is, most likely the more pay they will offer just to be able to retain clinicians. Next question is, can you specialize with NHSC? Yes, you can. There are a few specialties that are approved by NHSC. The approved postgraduate specialty programs for NHSC are DPR, AGD, pediatric dentistry, public health dentistry, and geriatric dentistry. Any other specialty, you will have to complete your NHSC service first. So if you're going into dental school and you already know you want to go into like orthodontics or oral surgery or any pedi um, not pediatrics, P um, perio, um, and you are set on that, you know for sure you're not going to change your mind, then NHSC is not for you because you will not be able to specialize right after dental school. You can still get the NHSC scholarship, complete your service, and then go back and specialize. That's always possible. Next question, if you want to complete an approved postgraduate program after dental school, will NHSC cover the cost of that as well? So no, NHSC only covers a maximum of four years of dental school. If you have to repeat any year or repeat any courses, that's on you. They don't pay for any of the postgraduate programs, even the ones that they have approved. Is the monthly stipend enough to cover your expenses, rent, food, other bills? 
And if not, do you have to take out loans for the rest of your expenses? So according to the guidance document for 2022-2023, NHSC scholars will receive a monthly stipend of currently estimated at $1,466 before federal taxes to assist with living expenses. That number has gone up. When I was in school, I was receiving, a, it was about 1,300 pre-tax. For me, it was enough, even though it was a really tight budget. Um, I had to have roommates in school to keep my expenses low. Um, I didn't have a car. I, kind of, I lived walking distance from school, so that also saved me a lot. And definitely like, you know, prepping my meals and not eating out as much, just so you, I could stay within the budget. Also by third and fourth year, once I had gotten very used to the curriculum and the flow of things, I had a part-time job just to help me with, you know, my expenses as well. Of course, depending on which city you live in, like 1300 like probably doesn't touch any of your bills. You can probably apply for grants. I would definitely look into grants first before trying to apply for any loans to help you out with your scholarship. If you have to take out loans, just be very mindful that you don't take out too much. The whole point of you receiving the scholarship is so you can graduate debt-free. That's something that's possible. So, you know, getting the scholarship and then having to take out loans for some expenses that maybe you can figure out in a budget, is, is not worth it. So if you don't have to take out loans and you have the time, see if you can maybe find a part-time job, something you can do to just help, you know, supplement your stipend. And then try to stay on a strict budget so you can reduce your spending. Next question, how would you describe your experience while working for the NHSC? Or can you mention any pros and cons that you may have experienced? NHSC is overall a very rewarding experience. You finally get to do what it is that you have been passionate about. If that is something that is truly what you enjoy doing, then this is great for you because you get to serve um, underprivileged communities. You get to provide care for them where they may not have had care. And so overall, it's a fantastic experience. Of course, this is my experience, um, but I will talk about one pro and one con together. One con is that unfortunately, you are somewhat limited by what you can provide to your patients in terms of a treatment plan. A lot of our patients are solely choosing a treatment plan based on what their, med their insurance will cover. With a lot of our patients having Medicaid as their insurance, that's generally really tough because in some states, Medicaid doesn't cover much. Most FQHC clin uh, FQHCs will offer some type of a sliding fee scale for your patients um, so that if their insurance doesn't cover certain things, they can still maybe be put in some type of a payment plan so that they can pay for a treatment if they truly desire. But sometimes that's still not enough. Um, they just can't afford it. And so that kind of leads me in a way to the pro in terms of Yes, you will be doing a lot of large restorations. You'll be doing a lot of extractions, a lot of dentures, and a lot of kids, seeing kids, stainless steel crowns and you know extractions on baby teeth and all of that. The pro here is that you will just become very good and very quick at all those procedures just because that's what you're doing so much of every day. In general, like oral surgery is not something that a lot of, I think, private practice dentists maybe are interested in doing. And that's something that I can say, you know, if you work in a, an FQHC clinic, you will be very comfortable with extractions because that will be something you do all the time. If the sliding fee program uh, or the discount program at your clinic is good, then yes, you will get to do some crowns, you will get to do some endo, but in general, it's not common that that's something that you're doing all the time. And definitely not at the same rate that is being done in private practice. Procedures like implant placements and orthodontics are not common. I'm sure there's an FQHC out there that probably offers that service to their patients, but in general, it's not common. So really that's something to consider if you're thinking apply, about applying for the scholarship. You know, you have to think about what type of dentist you want to be right after you graduate. What type of experiences do you want to have? Do you want to be placing implants all the time? Do you want to be doing, you know, Invisalign cases all the time? You have to think about all those things because there are not a lot of clinics that offer these opportunities for people. And so if this is something you want, you have to do the legwork, make sure to 
find clinics, you know, maybe that offer these opportunities for you to be able to offer to your patients. Um, and really, you just have to do the work. What makes an NHSC application competitive? I'll have to go with probably your commitment to community service, um, which will be shown in your CV and all the types of different community service uh, engagements you've been a part of. I think that's one big thing because that is the theme of the whole program. You know, if you are not someone that enjoys community service as much, you might not have the empathy that it requires that, you know, having a job in a federally qualified health center requires. You have to be empathetic to these patients. You have to be gentle with them. You have to be understanding, especially with their financial concerns. And so I think if you can show that you do a lot of community service and also that you just enjoy working with an underserved community through your essays, um, then that will make you competitive. Where can I find more information about the application program? NHSC has a guidance and application document that offers a very detailed description of everything you need to know how to apply, when to apply, what you know, documents you need to provide, and all of that. And so that's where you get all the information about the program. Okay, that was the last question. I hope this clarifies a lot of things for people that are thinking about applying for this program. The cycle is currently open. It opened in March of 2022 and it will close uh, in May of 2022. NHSC also hosts helpful application um, webinars and also question and answer sessions. You just need to sign up for their updates. So I will put their updates or their sign up link down below so you can sign up for it. And then every time they have some type of helpful seminar, you'll get the email so you can you know, ideally go watch it and see if that can help you. If you're thinking about primary care um, and you enjoy working with underserved communities, I've said it over and over again, but I mean, why not do it with NHSC and you, you, know, you can graduate from school debt free. These days, dental school is not cheap. A lot of them are over $200,000. So if you can do something like this and stay away from the debt, you know, then, then look into it. All right, thank you guys for watching the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to put them in the, you know, the chat below and I will answer them. If there are enough, I'll probably make a part two of this video, but if not, then you'll see my response below. Thank you so much. And if you have not already subscribed, please do so. Thanks for watching and also good luck to all those that are applying this year.